Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's John here. Uh, we're coming up to December, nearly Christmas. What have we got? We've got two weeks until Christmas. Um, and it's a bit of a strange video today uh, in that it's something I've not talked about uh, on the channel recently, and it's an unusual piece of content. Um, and it might just be amusing. It might just be um, me having a chat. I'm sorry that there's been a lack of content the past few weeks. Um, I've not been very well. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I've spent sort of nine days in bed with the flu. Um, and I'm still not 100%, so I might, might cough and splutter uh, during this video. But I've got myself a, a, a drink here with me whilst we record this. Um, and it's about my smart car. And it's bad news about my smart car in that, well, it's gone bang. Um, I wanted to start the video by showing you this photograph, uh, which was taken a few days ago um, on the back of a low loader. As you can see, my poor little Smart 450. It's a 2004 plate. Um, and if you haven't watched the video uh, yet, there is a video on uh, my YouTube channel, which is um, I bought a first generation smart car, uh, my Smart 42450 700cc walk around. And here it is. There's the car. Um, and. Uh, it, 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 it cost me 700 quid three or four years ago. Um, and uh, it's been a, a wonderful little workhorse for me. And actually, I bought it to trash it. I bought it to commute in. I commute 100 miles a day to work. Um, and uh, when I bought it, it had got 40-something uh, thousand miles on the clock. Um, it's now got 77,000 miles on the clock. And um, Sunday, just gone, uh, I was going to look at a car. Uh, I was going to look at a proton, actually, in Loughborough, about 70 miles away from me. Um, and on the A47, on the way there, about three or four miles uh, away from Loughborough, um, the car started shuddering. Uh, it started misfiring. So I pulled into a service station to see what was going on. Um, and the engine was red hot. And I thought, OK, I need a little bit of oil. So I put a couple of litres of oil in, um, which I'd kept in the boot and carried on my way, and the car was still misfiring, but it was um, not uh, to the point of where it was dangerous. So I go and look at my Proton, um, and fix a deal on that, so that's a good good news. And then um, I thought, right, what am I going to do about this, uh, this smart car? Can I limp it home um, 60 miles? And in hindsight, it was a terrible, terrible idea. Uh, I got about two miles away from home, and the car literally just gave up the ghost. There was a pop and a bang, um, and it stopped to the side of the road. So I had to be recovered. Uh, big shout out to Wakefield Autos, um, who brought me home. Um, and actually, this guy here, uh, Gary, has already brought me home before when I had a puncture. Um, oh, I had a massive blowout. <laughs> and we hit, bent the alloy. We couldn't get it home any other way. So and he remembered the car. Um, anyway, so this video is a, is a bit of amusing because um, I've done some initial uh, checks on the car, me and Dad, um, and effectively uh, a misfire in cylinder three um, is what's caused the problem. So the car has got uh, had a misfire in uh, cylinder three, um, and that has caused major drama in the long run so we've done a little bit of um a uh, diagnostics um and the turbo is cracked uh all the engine valves have burnt i've got zero compression in cylinder three reduced compression in cylinder two uh cylinder one is okay um which points towards the head gasket being blown as well which it is the head gasket uh is trashed um, piston rings all need replacing. It's a whole engine rebuild, if I'm honest. Um, and because it's got so hot, me driving it on the misfire, um, whilst limping at home, it's still got hot. Um, it's melted the, the catalytic converter down, uh, which was new recently, uh, which is uh, annoying. So I've I put a thing out on Twitter. I've had loads of people say, oh, you need to get rid of it. You need to scrap it. Or, oh, you can rebuild the engines, which you can. You can get engine rebuild kits. Um, or you can put a higher booster engine in or something similar. I'm not going to put um, a motorbike engine in the car. But it did give me a little bit of a um, dilemma. What am I going to do with the car? And I'll just let this video play in the background so you can see it. 
Um, I've done some initial research. You can buy engine rebuild kits. Um, there are different companies that do them, and they do different levels of engine rebuild kits. You've got the lucky kit. Uh, you've got the not so lucky kit. Um, which comes with piston rings and, and, and bits and pieces. You've got the Prudent Mechanic Kit, which is bearing shells at the same time uh, for the Conrads and all that sort of stuff. Um, you've got the It Could Be Worse Kit, and then you've got the um, the Old Deer Kit. That kit, for my model, uh, is 870 quid. Because it's more than what I paid for the car. Um, and this gets you piston rings... Uh, main bearing shells, big end, crankshaft door seal, conrod, head gasket and seal kit, uh, head bolts, exhaust valves, inlet valves, oil pump, oil chain, timing kit, um, and loads of bits and pieces as well. And that's one option. Uh, pay the 800 quid, rebuild the engine, and fingers crossed that everything's okay, but <laughs> my turbo's also gone, so I need a new turbo. Um, and a Smart 4.2 turbocharger used, used, not these ones, not the 99 quid ones, because they're for a, a diesel and they're terrible. Uh, a used one on eBay, 80 quid, 160 quid. This is from Smart Arse. Um, I would assume that they are a smart car breaker, uh, but 96% positive feedback, 170 quid. So we're we're starting to get to a thousand pounds. Then another catalytic converter. They're ninety quid. Um, I'm I'm having the the debate with myself, uh, but it is a good little car, and um, I think I'm going to try and fix it. Is the honest answer. Um, the car cost me seven hundred quid. That's what I paid for it in two thousand and nineteen. And I've spent probably 500 quid on it the past few years, keeping it on the road. We've had new tyres. It's had new front wheel bearings. Um, it's had a new catalytic converter. It's had new bits and pieces um, just to make it my own. And I do thrash it. Um, I do drive 100 miles a day, sometimes on dual carriageways at 70 miles an hour, um, on the way home in the cold, the snow. The sun, the heat, um, it gets used and abused. So it probably has cost me over the years all in £1,700. Um, and then to throw another £1,000, £1,200 at it to repair it, uh, many people would think I'm bonkers, but I've looked on Facebook Marketplace. I've looked on Gumtree. I've looked on uh, eBay. And if you were to look at a Smart 4.2, I'm looking at protons and hot tubs as well, but if you were to look at Smart 4.2s, uh, a used one with a, with 100,000 miles on the clock, £1,200. Well, that's going to need an engine rebuilt. It is. That's the way that they are. Um, so I'm going to have to spend another £800 rebuilding this one for it to be half decent. Um, I've got one here, two and a half grand. This is a more modern one. It's on 81,000 miles. Um, but even then, a half decent one that's going to need an engine rebuild, 56,000 miles. They say they need engine rebuilds if they've not been looked after properly between 60 and 80,000 miles. That is what they say. And it's, uh, it's true for these things. So I'm going to have to spend another £1,000 on this one, potentially, to rebuild the engine. So that's two and a half grand. Um, I don't know. I'm at a loss, is the honest answer. Um, and I'm throwing it out to you guys. I have thrown it out to Twitter. I've had some abuse um, from a lot of people saying, um, it's uneconomical. Why don't you spend your money on something good? You're crazy. Uh I've had genuine abuse in my DMs um, say you uh, should spend your money on something better. People are acting like <laughs> it's their money I'm spending. It's not, it's mine. Uh, so I made this little meme. There's Will Smith. Look. Where did all your money go? Well, it's gone here at the moment. Um, I'm going to keep you updated. And if you want to um, follow the progress, I'm going to do some content where we look at 
the engine. We are going to look at the damage. We're going to look at the turbo. We're going to look at the cat. Uh, but I wanted to give you an update, basically, as to what's happened to the car um, and just have a genuine consideration of, of where to go next. And I do need to consider it, but I think, I think I've made my mind up um, in that we're going to try and fix it um, without the motorbike engine. Anyway, let me know what you would do. Uh, let me know, have you been in this situation? Um, have you rebuilt a smart car engine? Maybe you've got a engine for sale. Because that's another option. There's people out there that do remanufactured engines for 900 quid. Um, but you have to give them your old engine. And then you, I'm going to have to drive down to Southport, sort of Southampton, um, to swap my engine over. And it's going to end up costing the same amount of money if I was to rebuild mine. Um, Labour charges is not an issue. Dad is a mechanic. So he can he can do that. Or we can do that together. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely just putting this video out as a little bit of a different uh, question as to what do you think I should do and have a genuine conversation, I suppose, about is it economical? Shall we do it? Am I crazy enough to do it? Would you like to see the content? Um, and just have a genuine chat about what's actually happened to the car because my channel is all about, hey, I've bought this car. Look at this. Isn't it awesome? And actually, this is the downside of car maintenance and ownership in isn't that sometimes they go wrong and i want to be open and honest and say actually the smart car is kaput uh, anyway i hope you've enjoyed the video it has been a little bit different um if you do please like and subscribe we're over the thousand subscribers mark now um we've got loads more content up and coming i won't lie i've been far too poorly to film videos um and youtube has been the furthest thing from my mind especially because I'm back to work now as well. And it's been quite cold. I don't want to get out and about there and make myself more poorly. Uh, we've got some videos coming up. Um, we've got some Proton videos coming up. We've got an MR2 video coming up. Um, and that's all going to be in the new year. Please like and subscribe um, and hit the bell icon if you haven't. And follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, I'm on TikToks, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's John Coupland, J-O-N-C-O-U-P-L-A-N-D, all one word. Here you are. Um, if you see this picture of me and my beautiful wife, um, then you're in the right place. But let me know in the comments. I, I look forward to it. Um, thanks for watching the video. Until next time, take care. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's John here with uh, just a quick update on the Purple Smart. Uh, if you haven't watched the video of when I originally bought it, uh, it's on the channel. I'll put a card up in the corner. Um, and if you haven't seen the latest update, well, it's gone bang. Um, and we talk about that in a video I uploaded a couple of days ago. Um, I'm here then in the garage with Dad, who, as you know, will be doing the majority of the work on the Purple Smart. We are in the process of tearing down the engine um, and stripping it all down as we speak. Uh, it's quite cold out and about, so uh, in fairness to Dad... I think the exact words were, he's freezing his nuts off out here. Uh, so we're doing it a bit at a time. Things that we've identified so far that are wrong. Um, obviously, the turbo has cracked. Uh, we can take a look at that. The manifold in the turbo has cracked. And inside the actual turbo itself, towards the wastegate, um, totally cracked through. It's going to be difficult to show on the video, but you can see oil coming out here. And then looking in here, there's a massive crack. Uh, in there so that is totally knackered um, so a new turbo is going to be needed uh, and we're going to be obviously sourcing one of those probably not a new one because they're a few hundred pounds uh, but probably going for a second hand one and fingers crossed with that um, as I say we tear or dad has torn down the majority of the car we've obviously got um, the, the, the bits and pieces from the engine off here valves and covers and filters and the cat um, the cat itself um, uh, has eaten itself you can hear that that's not the uh not the uh collets and bits and pieces making that but it's the inside of the catalytic converter um it's totally naked uh we're gonna have to get a new cat which is a shame because um that was quite a new cat on there a little while ago um dad's still working on getting uh the block to pieces really um we've got taking them the head off. taking the head off uh we've got the majority of it off um and actually, I thought it was going to be an engine out job. Uh, we've managed to get it to a point where we can access the majority of it um, from 
inside while the engine's still in place uh, and having a look at everything else that's in there. We don't really know exactly the extent of the damage until we get that engine to pieces and the head off. We might need um, new pistons, we might need new piston rings, uh, or it might be that a valve has just blown um, and we can get away with just replacing um, a few bits and pieces in there. Uh, I haven't got the spark plug to hand, um, but it did melt a spark plug uh, down to, to smithereens. Have you got that to hand? <laughs> While Dad finds that, um, somebody did point out to me um, that there might be a little bit of rust on the car, and I was surprised by that because uh, it's mainly plastic. Uh, lo and behold, though, there is a whacking great big hole that we've discovered um, in the wheel arch here, uh, which we'll, we need to be patching as well while we're here. But that's quite nasty. Um, and that is something that we're going to be doing during the rebuild. Um, so at the moment then, we're just getting down to the nitty gritty, down into the engine to see what damage there actually is. Um, we can see uh, just inside the top there, everything's looking so far so good. Um, and we're going to obviously be replacing things like gaskets uh, and that sort of thing. Ah, Dad's found the... Uh, the uh, spark plug that went boom and as you can see that has melted itself to smithereen so also part of the problem definitely we're going to be needing some new spark plugs thank you very much um so yeah uh, i'll do some updates when we get further down when we get the engine uh, into more of a state of um disassembly once we get that head off we'll have a look and be able to see the full extent of the damage but at the moment i'm, I'm feeling quietly confident i still think we're going to obviously be spending Maybe eight, nine hundred pounds on getting the uh, little purple smart back on the road. And uh, if you uh, want to follow the progress, please do uh, like and subscribe. Uh, you can comment down below. Uh, anything you want to comment, let's have a chat about this. Um, and if you're on the social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and the TikToks. I'm on the TikToks now as well. It's John Coupland, all one word. And we'll have some regular updates with regards to the purple smart. But... Um, uh, you know, for those of you that know the car, it's looking like at the moment we're, we're going to be doing an engine rebuild rather than putting in um, a reconditioned engine. And I quite like the, the fact that we we then know our own engine. We've done the work ourselves, um, and we know the uh, the inner workings of what we've done. Uh, for fans of the channel, there is the Peugeot 406 Estate. Uh, there might be a video coming on that at some point in the new year, but at the moment um, we will be focusing on <laughs> getting the Purple Smart up to date thanks for following the channel um and until next time uh with an update on hopefully better news about what's going on inside the engine stay safe and have a great day Good morning guys welcome back to the channel um i'm actually filming this on christmas day what dad's here on christmas eve? <laughs> what's what have you done on Christmas Eve? I patched that bit there. You've patched uh, a rusty sill. Um, it's John here with an update on the smart car. Yeah, the purple smart. And since we last had a look at it, um, <laughs> you can see it's a little bit different. I think uh, Dad has decided that this job is going to be far much easier with the engine and all the gubbins out of the car. So as you can see now then, um, the engine is out the gearbox is out, and we're just going to have a quick look at the current situation with regards to the Purple Smart. So as Dad says then, uh, he's already patched this wheel arch. That's what he was doing Christmas Eve. Um, let's take a look then. So we've got the gearbox out currently, and there is a little bit of an oil leak coming from this shaft here. So we're going to have to replace something in there, but that is the gearbox. It is entirely out of the car now. Um, the drive shaft here, we've got all engine ancillaries, hoses and bits and pieces, and plugs, leads, Everything is out there. The clutch is here. Uh, I will be possibly replacing that on on the uh, on the way that we're doing this. The pistons are here. They're okay. Um, I'm not needing to replace anything in the pistons apart from the piston rings. They will be being replaced um, as part of the engine rebuild. Uh, we've got some pulleys and alternator here. There's the alternator. Uh, we've got the starter. Um, and of course torsion bars and bits and pieces here. I think the sump is under here 
Yep, there's the sump under there, and all the bits and pieces from the engine uh, are in this box. So, um, we're planning on rebuilding. If you follow me on the Twitter, um, we have got some bits and pieces ordered already. This is the engine, then. Uh, it's out, and I think Dad has uh, semi-put it back together, just so he knows um, where it all goes. We're in this lull, aren't we, between Christmas and New Year, where um, things and bits and pieces coming from from uh, different places are going to take a little while due to a the royal mail strikes and b the time of year so um i, I understand why dad has put it semi back together so he knows how it uh, sort of all goes back if necessary um so there she is there is the purple smart um still in a state of disrepair but i have got a list now of everything that we're going to do and everything that we're going to repair the actual engine um isn't that damaged I know it looks drastic, uh, but the insides of the car uh, engine have not been um, damaged too much with the problem. We're going to be replacing, of course, all the valves, valve seals, um, head gasket, the turbo needs replacing, as we've covered in another video. Uh, but this is a quick update. If we have a look from the top... <laughs> That's what we can see uh, in the engine bay. It really, really is quite drastic. Um, and this is probably going to be an ongoing project well into the new year. Uh, I have started ordering bits and pieces, but again, they haven't arrived. Uh, people had been commenting on the previous video, and if you've not seen it, um, check it out, that we probably should be doing this with the engine out. Um, and me and Dad had a good... Uh, conflab about that and decided that that was probably the best way forward so the engine is out um, we're going to clean and steam clean and sort all of this out uh, before it all goes back together so we're going to be doing a proper job on it uh, painting chassis uh, getting rust off everything replacing things that we need to do um, so we're going to be doing a proper job on this in the end, which is, is understandable. I'm going to be throwing quite a bit of money um, at the poor little thing. But it is going to be a fair while before we are back on the road. And I am filming this on Christmas Day because uh, I'm oh, just about to get um, some Christmas dinner inside me. Mrs. John Cooper is here. Crystal is here somewhere. Uh, she's got her Christ Christmas scarf on. Uh, but I can assure you it's going to be a long time sent, uh, until we're putting this rear bumper back on the car um keep following the channel if you haven't subscribed already please do uh, we're going to have an update as we get things back together but the poor little smart car uh, is going to be a little while longer off the road but i thought you might like an update as a as a little bit of a christmas present maybe um until next time if you're not on the twitter uh, oh, sorry, if you're not following me on Twitter, please do. It's at John Cooper, all one word. I'm on the TikToks, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Please like and subscribe uh, if you haven't already done so. It really does help support do what I'm doing. Um, and if you've got any comments or any links, maybe, <laughs> to a workshop manual, because I think we're probably going to need one by the time it ends up uh, coming to putting it all back together. Whatever you're doing, have a great day, stay safe, and until next time, Take care. Bye-bye. Legends, welcome back to the channel. It's John here with a quick video for you, and this time it's a little bit different. We're talking about the smart car rebuild, and we're talking about costings and prices and parts list, and the list is just growing and growing and growing. If you haven't seen the progress so far on the smart car, check out uh, the videos on the channel put one on on Christmas Day, of all things, and this video is just part one of uh, me having done a little bit of shopping for parts um, for the car, and it's just gone to show just how much cash I have managed to save by shopping about. Um, this, then, is the tweet I put out on the 20th of December. It's just written my smart car Christmas list. Um, and so far, this was all the things that I uh, knew that I needed for the car. Since then, I've added things like fuel filter, oil filter gaskets, heat shield gaskets, turbo gaskets, uh, manifold gaskets, um, big end bolts, and all that sort of thing. Um, so things that I have identified that I need to replace 
so far in the smart car are as follows. Um, the head gasket, the head, the head needs totally rebuilding, which includes eight head bolts, uh, six valve sem seals, three exhaust valves. I had put originally one inlet valve, uh, because only one was damaged, but I'm gonna do all three and the head gasket set. Uh, it also needs the timing chain replacing, because why wouldn't I do that while I was there, including the sprockets, the guides, and the tensioner. Uh, the piston rings are all need replacing, and um, the big end bolts as well, because they are torqued. Um, the turbo and the manifold, I needed all the gaskets for the coolant pipes and all that sort of stuff. Drive belt for the alternator, because why not do it while I'm there? Um, all seals and O-rings, including some crank seals for the gearbox. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, oil filter, plug leads, air filter, uh, the engine sealant, and a set of sump bolts. And when we have originally spoke about doing this job, um, companies charge about £1,000 to rebuild the engine. You can buy rebuilt engines. They're about £800. Um, and you can buy kits. So I started looking at this website, SmartTune Limited, and looking at the list that I have um, written here, uh, the best kit that I could buy for my car, I identified was this, the Smart 42 It Could Be Worse kit, um, which says pretty much everything except the pistons themselves. The kit contains the piston rings, the bearings, the big end bearing shells, um, the crankshaft oil seal, conrod cap bolts, the whole head overall kit, including all the uh, O-rings and seals and that sort of thing, head bolts, three exhaust valves, three inlet valves, an oil pump, an oil pump chain kit, a timing chain kit, the gearbox main shaft seal, which we're going to replace, um, the two drive shaft oil seals, and the crankcase breather pipe, which I have just replaced recently, and then the gasket for the sump. Um, that then, for my car, which is a 698 with standard rings and bearing shells, would have been £670. That's £670 just to overhaul the engine without then factoring in things like the new turbo that we're going to need, the new uh, cat converter, um, and all the things such as the oil filter, the plug leads, the air filter, fuel filter, um, and that sort of thing, and the drive belt, etc. So I did a little bit of shopping about because I had no idea where to start with this. I've got no part numbers or anything. Um, I went on to uh, a website which uh, you've no doubt used, which is eBay, and there's a seller which is Mercedes and Smart Newcastle. They have a lot of these parts, genuine parts, um, and next to them they list the part numbers. So that is a great start. For example, a set of oil sump pan bolts, 16 quid. Head bolts, 20 quid. Fuel filter, 15 pounds. And although it's a genuine part, that's still quite expensive, isn't it? 16 quid for a fuel filter. Um, big end Conrod shells, 70 quid, uh, which uh, I then thought, well, actually, we've got valve stem seals, 20 quid. Uh, what else do we need? There's lots of things that we need. We don't need badges and bits and pieces. Um, we don't need that, but we're going to need one of these, an alternator belt, 20 quid. Um, Water pump. I'm going to do it while I'm there. £110. That's a lot of money. Um, and I genuinely thought to myself, well, maybe then these rebuild kits are worth the cash. Um, things I then started seeing was the exhaust valve, 20 quid. Inlet valves, 15 quid. Um, the heat shield gasket, 40 quid. Um, and I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to bite the bullet and buy this kit. Uh, and it just then occurred to me to have another little search on eBay for these kits, and I found this. Rebuild your smart car kit. Uh, 700cc, pistons, rings, valves, timing chain kit, and a head gasket. £229. Um, they're not genuine parts, they aren't. Uh, but they are OE quality and OE spec. Um, and in this kit, we're getting a full set of standard piston rings. We're getting the piston rings, we're getting the cylinder head gasket, we're getting the head bolts, we're getting the conrod shells, we're getting the inlet valves, the exhaust valves, the stem seals, timing chain kit, and the sealer. Hang on a minute, that sounds like this, doesn't it? 
Uh, apart from things that I'm not going to be replacing, such as the uh, the oil pump and the oil pump chain kit, um, the crankcase breather pipe, uh, 229 quid, so 230 pound with three postage. Um, Smart Tune are selling it for 670 pounds. Well, hang on a minute. Uh, what's going on here? Because this isn't genuine parts. This is OE parts as well. Um, how have we gone from 229 to 670? Um, and I've tallied up buying the same parts, these parts here, uh, smart car rebuild kit um, at uh, Smart Mercedes. So the piston rings, £60. This is from Smart, by the way. Um, cylinder head gasket, £35. Head bolts, 20 quid. Conrad shells, £60. Inlet valves, £20 a piece, 20 40 60 Exhaust valves, 20 40 60 60 120 We're getting into the four £500 um, for this kit from Smart. Timing chain kit, £150. Uh, valve stem seals, £20. So I've managed to buy this afternoon a full engine rebuild kit, minus a few bits and pieces. I'm going to need some other things from this guy, um, including O-rings and, and that sort of stuff. But still, to rebuild everything at the moment, um, it's looking like it's going to come in less than this original price just to rebuild the engine from this kit, which is great news. Um, I've been on this website as well this afternoon, which is Smart smartstuff.parts. Uh, and I've ordered some extra bits and pieces that I couldn't get offline. Um, Conrod bolts, um, because these are torxed uh, and they are stretch bolts. 569 for a set of six. Genuine from Smart, 36.99. That is £30 cheaper. And these are um, the same. They're the same part number. Um, we, I've ordered some wheel arch clips as well for my bumper. Two quid, just to put it into perspective, £6 from Smart. Uh, these shafts, £30 from Smart, uh, and then two of these at £12.24 uh, for the two, so £7 odd, um, minus the VAT. Uh, the thing that was a killer, <laughs> really, uh, was the postage on this. But today, I've pretty much bought everything I need to um, rebuild the head, rebuild the gearbox. And it's cost me 250, 60, 64 pounds. 264 quid. Um, big chunk of 670. <laughs> so I'm glad I've done some shopping about. And that's kind of what I wanted to highlight in this video. Um, it did take me a while. It's taken me most of today um, to go through, to find part numbers, to find the best price, to find the best kit to look at everything, to chop and change. And I'm not here telling you that you need to be shopping about. I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is uh, people that are selling you rebuild kits, the smart specialists who are actually genuinely expected to have gone, do you know what, we're going to get everything that we need together and it's going to be a half decent price for you. Um, what's that? Three times the price? Not impressed. Not impressed. Um we will do some more budgeting when I've bought some more bits and pieces. I've only bought uh, from a couple of places. Things I still need to buy are all the service parts. I'm going to get them locally. Um, there's a great company uh, local to where I live who are probably 60% cheaper than uh, a lot of places. I've got an account with them, and they're definitely 80%. And I can tell you categorically, because I've done the maths, they're 80% cheaper than Euro car parts. Um, so I'll be buying bits and pieces from there. Anyway, just a quick quick one about budget and how we've spent so far. 260 quid. Uh, and I'm going to be able to rebuild the head, the timing chain, uh, all the pistons, um, the gearbox, and then uh, all that's left to buy are ancillaries, um, O-drives, gasket seals, oil filters, air filters, service parts, and... Um, and a new turbo. So the initial, I think I'm going to spend a thousand pounds, might actually end up being less than five hundred pounds. And um, anyway, if you're new to the channel, uh, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm on the TikToks as well. It's John Coopland. And until next time, if you're into uh, all things weird and wacky, and you're following 
the smart car process. Have a great day. Um, stay with the channel and I will speak to you soon. Take care. Goodbye. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a quick video. We are going to do some brake pipe manufacturing. I say we, Dad is in the garage and we're gonna be making an end for the uh, this brake pipe for the smart car. So we're just gonna chop this end off. You've got a tool there that is cutting that end off. And we've got our coil of, I assume it's copper, copper brake pipe there. We've lubricated that up with some WD-40 first and foremost and we're going to just chop that end off. So the reason we've chopped that end off is just because the end that came with this pipe has sort of been a bit hacked about a little bit and ground so Dad's cut that off just to give us a nice cleaner end for, uh, for the project. So we bought this kit off eBay, I won't lie, it's probably not the best kit in the world. About 15, 20 quid, and it's a brake pipe kit. There were options available that were sort of 80, 90, 100 pounds, but we're not fixing brake pipes every week, so for 20 odd quid, hopefully it will do the job. Slides on the end there, and it's tightened up with a sort of hex key. And then you screw in this part on the end, which if I'm right will thread the end of that copper pipe. Am I right? No, I'm not right. What will it do? It's lining it up for how far it wants to be stuck through. That should be it. Tighten that in place. Now lining that up. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. So now that tool has measured the amount of protrusion of that copper pipe into the tool, ready to fit an end on there. There's an oil on there so we don't ruin this. So we're removing the tool now. Moment of truth, how's that end come out okay? Maybe we should have probably popped that on first, but we shall see. How's it looking? Oh yeah, that's okay. It's sort of flared that end, hasn't it? Filing it down now, just getting burrs off the edge there. There is single flared end on the brake pipe and uh, the verdict from Dad was not bad for a cheap £15 tool. There it is. Using that tool just to flare the end of a piece of brake pipe. So the next part is to, is to compare it to the old one. Looks quite good. Just got to remember to put the... That's a proper metric one with a flat back on it. I think it's got a flat back with that tool. But... I see. And the next part is to match the shape of the old brake part there, you can see it on the floor. So 
Dad's going to preliminarily get the length and shape of this brake pipe measured out so we don't waste too much of this copper pipe unnecessarily. So this is a preliminary measure, it's not the not the final piece as you can see, but got quite a tight bend on that end. We've got to be careful when we're shaping that not to go too far and maybe even damage or bend that pipe. And as before we've measured the size and the end and we're just going to cut that off now with this little pipe cutting tool. You said you was going to get it right with a piece of string. Put a piece of string down the old one, down all the length of it and then use the string to get this length exactly right. Because that's sort of a flexible measure, I suppose. It's not far out as it is. Yeah, the file time. So we've got a file here, snaking that end. Just using the tang just to ream the end out. And here's the excess. There you go. Ready to measure it exactly. Straight. Been sent to find some string. Uh, we shall see if we can find some. Yeah, would you have it? I managed to find some string. Well, I've managed to find some string. You never thought we'd need that for making a brake pipe, did you? So this is the old brake pipe. And what Dad's doing is not overly technical, but does the job using a piece of string to measure exactly the length of the existing brake pipe. Again, no massively fancy techniques needed. Just some old garden string. So we've got an end on the brake pipe now and measuring that cut pipe. See how close we were. Ball bomb. Straight on cue. Right size. Good news. So we're going to start bending the. No, we're going to take this end off first off the old pipe because it's a special end. Oh, okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're putting a special end on this end. And what makes that so special? It's a different shape. It's different. different. It's a bit queer on the smart car. It's just it's a good end, so I'm using it again. That's what I'll point out to you about the. It's yep. Better on there. Yeah. It should be a flat back. That tool makes it with a tapered back. I see. Yep. But when you put it in, it'll nip. But up. it'll still nip up. While Stan's cutting that end off, here's a quick look at the rebuilt cylinder head. Still waiting to strap it all back down again. But there's a look inside. All nice and clean, and we've got that head just sat on there just to keep all the dust and grime and dirt out of it. So. I shall put it back on now, just so we don't get all stuff in there. Right, looks like we're good to get that end on. So you might notice that we, we've got a new female brake pipe union here. We're actually keeping the old one off the car on this new pipe, mainly because we know that that is good and it fits the car and is uh, OEM. There's no reason why that union can't be used again. So we're tightening up the tool again now to make the end of this brake pipe. And it is a single flare, we've been in double check, not a double flare. Sometimes on the female end we'll have a double flare, but on this car, just a single flare. Good job we checked. So we'll remove the uh, tool parts now to reveal what we've made. Hopefully it's come out okay. If not, we've wasted a whole length of copper brake pipe. Yeah, happy days. Come out okay. Just file off any rough edges and burrs. Anything that 
Might stop it from sitting nice and flush. And now it's just a case of shaping up the new pipe in relation to the old pipe. Just getting the angles all right. This is not going to be a quick process. But the majority of the pipe is relatively straight. It's just getting these ends right, so... It's a bit difficult when you've got someone not able to help you because they're filming. So after much bending later, that end is done. Dad's just getting to the end. He's worked quite quick. And I just said to Dad, actually that's bent quite easily. And he's explained to me that it's actually called Cunifer, this pipe. So it's a copper alloy. Which is tweaking on this end, but not far off. There we go. That is one new smart car rear brake pipe created in less than sort of 15 20 minutes. And uh, what we'll do in just a moment, after we've checked the fitment against the car, which is what Dad's doing now, is we'll have a look at the old brake pipe and show you why it needed replacing. So, Dad's just checking the fitment now of the new brake pipe fitting it into the hub there and checking whether it fits in all the clips nice and snug some tweaking is going to be Needed, obviously. There's a first attempt fit. That end is now on. This end is now going on. And you can see that it's looking good. Yeah, a little bit of tweaking here. Not far off, yeah, a bit of tweaking. Make it look better. It gives you an idea of what we've been trying to achieve. Sure, it needs a bit of tweaking to make it look pretty, but looking good. Right, so the moment of truth and the reason why we've replaced oh. the brake hose. Pipe. Uh, pipe, not hose yet. Uh, is because the old one was totally posh rotten. And it's just snapped straight in half, so... Not a waste of our time, cash, or effort. Definitely needed doing while I was here. It didn't need much to uh, to break there. Are you happy with uh, the fact that we've replaced it? So it didn't break there. No. Rotten. Posh rotten. So a job well done. That's it then. That's uh, us or dad making a new brake pipe for a smart car 42450 if you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up it helps on the algorithm uh, if you're liking the progress so far drop us a comment um what would you like to see next what would you like us to do um if you're not subscribed please do so uh, it does help and of course you can follow us on twitter instagram facebook and the tiktoks now yes i'm on the tiktoks uh, more videos on the way including um putting this engine back together but until next time take care and uh, drive safe. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. It's John here uh, with Crystal today. She's in the smart car workshop. Say hello. Uh, she's been helping. Just a quick update then on the smart car. If you've been following the rebuild project, uh, it's going on. It's after the Christmas period now. It's after um, December into January. And we're getting there. Dad's been uh, busy. He has rebuilt now the cylinder head. Um, it's got all the new exhaust valves uh, and inlet valves and everything in there. Uh, it's all been cleaned and tidied up, tarted up and ready to go. We've got the kits here with everything that we're going to be replacing. We've got head bolts in there. We've got the head gasket kit. We've got some new Conrod bearings here. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the timing chain kit and everything in there. 
and all OEM quality. And actually, I'm quite surprised with the quality of this. Piston rings, there to go on, and these are the valve boxes there. Sprockets from the timing chain. And uh, this is my parts list. I'm slowly but surely ticking it all off. Um, and that is things that we have purchased so far, all crossed off, and things that are left to do. Um, look at this. Look at this big tray of nuts and bolts. When I was a kid, um, one of the worst jobs in the world was Dad would tip that out and <laughs> find what he needed, and then my job was to put them all back in. Is that your job now? Crystal's being a, a bit needy. And you might hear that I'm, I'm, I'm not, not 100%. I'm not feeling too great. Um, I'm still off my feet, really, since... Um, December, I was quite ill in December, um, but being out here and in the cold hasn't really helped, and Dad as well is not, not the best uh, of health at the moment, but we're, we're doing all right. These are all the bits and pieces then from um, the car that have been cleaned. Uh, we've got brake pipe, uh, new brake pipe here that's going to be going on the car, we're replacing one of those. Um, and this stuff, I'm going to give it a big shout out from The Homes Bargains. Uh, Elbow grease degreaser, absolutely fantastic. We tried petrol, we tried turps and all that sort of stuff, and we found that that stuff is really the best stuff to um, to be degreasing everything. These pie trays as well, obviously, good for organising nuts and bolts. And I've got some new stainless screws there for uh, the sump and bits and pieces as well. Everything's still off the car then, as you can see. Uh, work has taken place underneath the car. I'm going to grab a torch and um, we're going to have a quick look underneath uh, to see what has been done underneath here let's just get that so everything has been cleaned down wax oiled underneath here as well uh, all nice and shiny because why not why we're under here as i say that brake pipe is currently off that'll be being replaced but by a tool to do that uh, but under here, looking all nice and clean and tidy, wax oiled, tidied up, ready for the engine to be going back in. Our gearbox is still over here. Um, we're trying to be as careful as we can with that uh, because of all the electrics on there. And we've noticed these reluctor rings on the ABS, uh, ABS reluctor rings here, are absolutely shot. Um, so I've just bought a set of those. We're going to be replacing those as well. Um, loads of parts are incoming this week, including um, bits for the engine. Uh, we've got loads of bits coming. And Dad's there just having a bit of a tidy up after some work today. Managed to grab ourselves a copy of the um, workshop manual, which has been really helpful from Mercedes um, and things that are left to buy really are service parts now, air filters, oil filters, uh, bits and pieces like that. Still to purchase a new turbo but I think the plan is to get the head all back together, engine all back together and, 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 and fired up and go from there. So that's it, that's a quick update really on Project Smart Car. Um, I did go and look at another smart car for sale recently. Um, it was a numeric blue one. Um, it got 60-something thousand miles on the clock, but uh, it really needed the same doing to it that we're currently doing now. Um, so uh, so we've, we're going to stick to Project Purple Smart, and I've decided not to give Dad another one to rebuild. So that's it. Quick update then um, on the smart car progress. If you're not already following me on the Twitter, it's at John Coopendor, one word. Uh, we're on TikToks. Instagram and Facebook as well. And the next update, really, I think, will be that the engine is fully rebuilt um, and is back in the car <laughs> and bits and pieces going back on there. Thanks for watching. If you've liked the video, please do give it a like. The algorithms on the YouTube uh, is what keeps me going. Um, you can also subscribe if you've not already. We've hit the 1,000 subscribers, so thanks to everybody who's subscribed. And um, until next time, happy and safe motoring. And uh, we will leave you with a shot of Crystal, who's uh, winding Dad up out here. <laughs> what are you doing? It's never going to go again, is it? It's always Tum Tum's time. Thanks for watching.
Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel uh, on what might be a bit of a mammoth update in regards to the smart car engine rebuild. Uh, Dad is here. He's been working non-stop this week uh, to get the smart car engine back to this state. Yes, uh, it is. It's rebuilt. Uh, and we're in the process at the moment of refitting the gearbox back onto the engine. The engine then has been totally rebuilt now. Um, I don't have footage of that sadly because I've been at work and Dad's been working hard in the smart car workshop. Um, we've got photographs of the work that's been done so there will be a video where I talk through the photographs of the work in progress but effectively last time we spoke the um, top, the head, and I can't think of the word I want right now, um, was rebuilt. Um, and now the big end and the bottom of the engine has all been put back together. Pistons inserted back into the cylinder head. That's the word I wanted. Um, head gasket replaced. Lots of things replaced. All new plugs. But everything is, is, is going back nicely, really. Uh, and as you can see, I'm not being much of a help at the moment. Whilst uh, Dad is putting all the nuts and bolts and screws and everything back into uh, the gearbox. We haven't replaced the clutch. And it was one of those things that I thought, do we do it while we're there? It's quite costly to do. It would have been a sort of a 500 pound job. Um, and actually the clutch on it didn't look too bad. And it's one of those funny, soft touch, automatic, weird clutches that actually might have needed some adjustment when putting back in and we just don't have the skills or the details how to do that. So uh, the old clutch has gone back in and if the old clutch wears in the near future then we're going to have to do it aren't we but at the moment the old clutch is back is in the, the unit. The Royal Way it's dad. Do you want to just talk us through what you've done this past week um, while you're putting that back together? What we've done when the parts arrived I've put new rings on the pistons Cleaned the pistons up, put new rings on it, fitted all new valves, lapped the valves lightly, they didn't need a lot of lapping on a modern engine. Put some new big end shells in, used and reused the old main bearing shells because they are fine. All new gaskets and seals, put her all back together. Now I'm just popping the gearbox back on. Then I'll sort all the wiring out, which is my biggest worry. Yeah, that's the thing. We've got these this electrical system with this electrical gearbox and all these uh, electrical components to go back together. And, and as Dad said, that is the worry in that there might be something somewhere just not talking to itself properly. So I think the plan is, by the end of this weekend, that that engine is going to be back in the car and hopefully... <laughs> up, so up and running uh, th we do need a new turbo manifold I have managed to source one um, I've managed to source an original smart one the actual turbo itself we think is fine um, but the manifold did crack as we know again I've managed to source an original smart one it's cost me 80 quid um, to put that into perspective a second hand turbo with the manifold that we don't know about is costing about 110 to 150 pounds. Um, the seller <laughs> got a bulk lot of um, smart car parts and has assured me that he's cross-referenced the part numbers and it is for a 700cc turbo. If not, I'm going to have to send it back. Um, he's aware of that. Uh, but the turbo manifold is on the way and it's a brand new, genuine, smart one. So Dad's putting that back together. Let's have a look at the drive shafts, which have been overhauled as well we've done new abs and um, reluxa rings on the end there and uh, the old ones were totally totally shot so that's all been overhauled and replaced and um, the drive shafts there and uh, i can see that dad has painted them up and sprayed them to make them a little bit nicer as well Stop the reluctors uh, is it hammer right you've put on there not hammerite, uh, but it has been sprayed to stop the um, reluctors from corroding. But yeah, the engine then, nearly um, back into <laughs> hopefully fighting fit standard. And obviously, we won't know until we try and uh, try and start her up. But uh, everything's really been replaced that we thought might be an issue, including these uh, 
plug leads because actually we think that the plug leads were probably the main cause of the issue. I think a lot of things have happened and it's all gone bang in one go. There's been a little bit of corrosion on the rear of the chassis here. Dad has wire wheeled that back with a Dremel. Uh, Russ treated it and just blacked it over. And there wasn't a hole there, which we thought there might be, so that's good news. Uh, but apart from that, we're, uh, we're in hopefully pretty good fettle for the next part. And I suppose the next update that we do will be uh, that the engine has gone back in the car, or is going back in the car. Um, all service parts have been bought now. We've got the oil filters and air filters and everything to go. Is there anything else you can think of that we've we've got to do as a matter of urgency now? No, we've got the brake pipe done, we've got the corrosion done, patched that wheel arch. This is alright, mate. I've managed to uh, teach Dad how to use WhatsApp these past few weeks and that's been invaluable because he's been sending me videos and photographs of the update which again I will share with you in a uh, separate build video that's it then that's the update from this weekend hopefully by tomorrow or earlier uh, early morning of <laughs> Monday Tuesday we'll have got the engine back in if you've uh, liked the video please uh, give it a like it does help with the YouTube algorithm um, if you've uh, got anything to say please give us a comment uh, on the video as well please like and subscribe definitely do that and if you're not following me on twitter already uh, where have you been it's at john coopland all one word loads of up-to-date smart updates on there and more comedy stuff as well uh, we've got fun and games i'll just talk about general bits and pieces uh, there's loads of proton stuff coming up this year uh, we've got some armstrong siddley stuff coming up as well so that will be on the channel uh, very soon into march and into the rest of this year have a great day whatever you're up to uh, stay safe and thanks for watching goodbye hello you absolute legends welcome back to the channel what possibly could this light be shining on well it's almost a bit of a revelation isn't it because the smart car engine is on its way back into the car yes what a mammoth update that is after all this after a full rebuild and after a full strip down repair of nearly everything on this engine, including the gearbox, um, it's going back in the car. And quite an intriguing way that we're doing it. Uh, Dad has put some threaded bar into the uh, engine mount holes, through the engine mounts, and then the way we're doing it is by jacking it up and then tightening these threaded bars through the mounts so the engine slowly but surely comes back into position. And if everything works okay, then uh, it's going to end up in the right sort of place very soon. So all the electrics, uh, the wiring harness has been tidied up a little bit. There were some nicks and bits and pieces. Dad's tidied that up. Um, everything's been connected up as far as we can connect up there. Alternator belt has now been fitted. Um, in here, the alternator is back on, uh, secondary air pump is on, the engine has been compression tested, we've got compression in all three cylinders, which is good news, and it's been spun over, and we've got oil pressure as well. So the engine, at the moment, <laughs> it seems to be working as it should, obviously time will tell when we get to a stage where we can fire it up, and obviously... As soon as we get to that stage, you will be the first to know. Um, we're at the point now of getting some hoses connected onto the back of the engine. And the way that we're going to be doing that is through the top here. You can see it better from the top. And you can see the engine now is starting to look like it's nearing its final position. We've got the airbox there. Uh, but at the moment, we are at a stage where the engine is being slowly but surely lifted into place using these threaded bars and uh, that was just the update then in regards to the engine when it's on the way in or when it's back in we will update you lots to do yet but at the moment we are getting to a stage where things are looking promising aren't they um if you are new to the channel please give us a like and subscribe it really does help uh, you can leave a comment if you want uh, also check out the other videos if you haven't already and if you're not on twitter Facebook, Instagrams, all the TikToks uh, following me yet, please do. It's at John Coupland, all one word. But big update coming soon, and the big update, I suppose, next will be that the engine is back in the car. And maybe, just maybe, we'll be firing it up. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye. 
Hello you absolute legends, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Smart Car Workshop. Uh, and since we last spoke, there's been some big progress and some big updates as I'm sure you can no doubt see. Dad is in here, he's doing the last few twiddly bits uh, on getting the car ready to hopefully, fingers crossed, be back on the road very soon. Uh, last time we did an update video, uh, we were putting the engine back into the car. If you remember, we had the threaded bar into the mounting system and we were jacking the engine up slowly and steadily uh, using that system. As you can see then, the engine is now fully rebuilt. It is fully back in place and uh, the parts left over in the garage are getting fewer and fewer by the moment. We are at the stage now where the turbo has been repaired, i.e. the new manifold has been fitted. Uh, and if you remember from the last video, I managed to grab a brand new smart, genuine smart manifold, and that has now been fitted to the car. Uh, you can see that all the um, linkages are back on, brake lines have all been bled, Coolant system has been bled. Um, the engine now has been tested. If you've seen the short video uh, that I posted, uh, that Dad sent me the other day, I think it's the 11 second one. The engine does fire up. We've got compression. It appears to be working. And as you can see, everything is looking nice and shiny and relatively new at the moment. We're at the stage now then, where we're about to put the exhaust back on. Uh, you can see that this exhaust has been cut open because it was rattling, there was loads of bits and pieces in there. We thought that the rattle inside was the catalytic converter that had sort of melted down and gone into the back box. Uh, that doesn't appear to be the case, in fact it appears that it was the wadding uh, in the back box that has got hot, has melted. Um, and has then become this big mass inside the uh, back box. So we're going to put the original uh, back on the car and see how it goes. It might be that I still need a new back box and catalytic converter. We're not sure. Um, but at the moment, just for testing, if anything, that's going to go back on. Waiting for a few things. We're waiting for a stainless steel e-clip for the turbo wastegate. Um, we're getting that from Tool Station, and uh, you might have seen on the Twitter earlier this week. I posted a picture of this. This is the secondary air pump, and I'll take it out into the light so you can see it. Mum's dancing around; she doesn't want to be on the video. If you want to be on the video, you can be. <laughs> um, and this is the secondary air pump inside, and you can see. Uh, that it's all worn, it's all rusty, and actually, uh, it's not working at all. We've decided to delete it. We're not going to be putting it back on the car. Makes no difference, according to the smart car experts, um, to have that or not. So we're just going to leave that off the car. It's not going to affect the performance in any way, shape, or form. And aside from that, once we've got the exhaust back on, it's getting the wheels on, it's getting the back bumper on, and taking it, hopefully, fingers crossed, out for a run. And that will be the next update, hopefully, that the smart car is back together, that it is working. Um, I'm sure there will be some sort of niggles that we're going to have to sort out, maybe some electrical issues, but we're not going to find out, really, until we get it all back together. The next part, then, will be my forte, which will be sorting all this out, because as you can see in the progress and the process, things have got a bit mucky, things have got a little bit dirty. I've got all these invoices to sort out. So the interior is going to get a blooming good valet. That's the next part to do. Uh, but yeah, that's the update on the smart car then. Nearly, really, build done. Uh, Dad is putting the exhaust back on whilst we're doing this video. Um, and that's it. <laughs> I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video and this quick update as to where we are. Um, if you have, please give the video a like, please give the channel a subscribe, and uh, please follow me on the socials as well. It's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I'm on the TikToks as well. Uh, it's at John Coupland, all one word. Uh, there might be another update video very shortly of me bezing this up and down our drive, who knows? Uh, but until then, stay safe. Uh, thanks for your support. Take care, and we'll speak to you again. Bye-bye.
Hello you absolute legends, welcome back to the channel. It's John here with a uh, quick update, really, very quick, uh, from the Smart Car Workshop. I've done a live video, I'm not sure if that will also be uploaded onto the channel or not. I'm, I'm not an expert. My first live video, if you saw the live video, then this will say the same thing. So stop watching. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, really, should I? I should say keep watching because my view hours and the algorithm mean a lot. Uh, anyway, you can see that the Smart Car is now nearly very nearly uh, back together. We've got this rear crash bar back on. That's been tidied up and uh, made to look a little bit more pretty. The uh, rear suspension arms are back on. The exhaust box is back on. This wheel is back on. The wheel arch liner there is back on. We're going to just be putting the next wheel arch liner back into place. We needed to uh, screw it back together because it's all been ripped to shreds so i'll give those to the smart car mechanic please thank you uh we've got one of these clips to go on as well it's a e-clip for the turbo wastegate but as you can see the next job really is going to be put that wheel arch liner back on number one put the turbo e-clip on number two put the wheel on number three put the bumper on number four and I suppose then we're good to go, aren't we? We're, we're back in business. <laughs> Touch wood. Um, as you can see, all the parts and bits and pieces that we removed from the car are now back on the car. There's nothing left over that we are going to need to be putting back on. It's always good, isn't it, when you haven't got nuts and bolts and washers and bits and pieces left over. That's all back on the car. As I say, we've got this wheel back on. Um, we've got some exploration to do on the front because the horn isn't working. Probably a simple thing, it might not even be plugged in, um, but that's a, not a major issue. And if it is, if the horn is broken, then my intention is to put a proton horn on it, because I've got one of those in stock. So there might be a proton horn on a smart car at some point. Um, <laughs> Malaysia and Mitsubishi meet. Uh, probably the first time anyone has ever put anything proton on a smart car. Uh, so that's fitting this Eclip to the uh, turbo wastegate. We've got a stainless steel one on the way. We'll be putting the wheel arch liner back in, where well, it's in, but it just needs screwing into place, and the back bumper will be going on. And then, you know what that time that'll be, and it'll be road test time. Uh, inside's looking a bit cleaner, a bit nicer, um, and it's a good old clean out and hoover out and tidy up, and just a general polish and hoover out. But apart from that, uh, we'll be then good to go on the Smart Car Workshop. Uh, I don't know what I'll be doing next. Um, I'll need to find something else for down to repair no doubt um thanks for watching this update the next update will be it's it's out it's ready to rumble and it's going i might even take you along on the road test um until then have a great day please give the video a like and a subscribe if you're not already subscribed i'm on twitter facebook instagram and the tiktok it's at john Cooper, all one word until then uh take care drive safe ta -ra. Well, hello, you absolute legends. We are in the smart car workshop, and it's John here. And I'm just about to take it on his third road, first road test. Shut the window. Put it in reverse. We're out of here. We're out of the smart car workshop. Let's go. On the first road test since the engine has been fully rebuilt, I'm just going to pull forward and back up a bit differently because it's quite tight. And the last thing I want to do is crash it on the road test. You might be able to hear the engine, you might not. But at this moment in time, this is my first time driving this car since Dad, in fairness, all of Dad has done for the past month is rebuild it. So I'm just going to take it round the block just to make sure that that gear, or the gears, are actually changing. And you'll get to see a little bit of our local area as well. A little bit of Lincolnshire, it's a cold January afternoon at the moment she's sounding good there's a bump here it comes we'll go just down the road 
just to make sure that she's changing gear. And actually, this feels so alien to drive at this moment in time. It's just somebody coming, so we'll wait. You can see Mum's Hyundai there. If you've not uh, seen the video of me buying Mum's Hyundai for her. And there we are, we're out. So, out of reverse, into automatic. Changed up gear, into second gear, into third gear. There's a little bit of a whine from the brakes because they are a bit rusty. But actually the engine has got a much higher note. It's got a bit of a whine, I won't lie. It's a bit more of a whine in what I'm used to. But at the moment, so far so good I'm gonna put it into because we've got two modes on here so it's in third gear uh, we'll put it down into two it's dropped into two we'll put her up into third down into second I'm gonna put it back into automatic it's got this semi soft touch version of itself It is so much more responsive than it was, it really is. And it's grumbling away. My brakes are really binding at the front because they're rusty as anything. Into first. Into second. Gently into third. There's a bit of a high whine. Not sure if that is because it is new. But so far, road test numero uno is good. It's got a limp mode. So Dad's going to come with me now for the second part of the road test. Just going to go up to the local village and back. So we're on the second part of the road test now. And we're on Lincolnshire's finest back roads. You can see they're all muddy and everyone's working in the fields. We're cruising at around 38 miles an hour. I've got Dad in the car with me as well now. And there is, there's a little bit of a metallic rattle as we pull away, something that's probably a little bit loose we need to deal with. There's a slow moving tractor. And when I put my foot on the brake, you can hear that they're rusty as anything on the front. Probably not picked up in the video, but I'll turn around here if you want. What do you reckon? Yeah. So we'll turn around. This is our local veterinarian service as well. They're going to be pleased that they're getting a little bit of exposure. Spin around in their car park. And Give it a little bit of a turn around and then we shall go from there. But for our first uh, first road test, and it is, it is genuinely the first road test. She's not doing too bad. The ABS lights. No ABS lights, no warning lights. We've scanned the car, no codes. Yeah, the wine is slowly disappearing, that is right. There was a little wine, it's slowly going, and it's getting a bit more grumbly now. Not sure what this tractor's doing. He's just spreading the squad a bit out. In the middle of the blooming road, though. He's cleaning the roads up. Anyone that... Uh, what he's doing, he's levelling them. So in rather than being stood up in heaps. How's a moan about tractors? It's just levelling it out now. It's all fun and games in Lincolnshire. Well I've got 
got a, a mini driver that's right up my oh, backside, so I'm not able to uh, test the brakes properly because he wants to be in the boot of the smart car. Shout out to SCAC. doing 40, we'll take it up to 50. It's actually quite bumpy on this back road at 40, so we might not hit 50. There we are. We're at 50. She's pulling away nicely at that. We're in fifth gear, we've got one more to go. We're in sixth. And putting the brakes on, getting some some of that rust off. As I say, I don't want to drive it like a lunatic and blow it up. But at the moment, everything's looking good. Seventy-seven thousand one hundred and forty-six miles, and the smart car needed rebuilding at that. But Dad has done it. He's done the job. The proof is in the pudding, and I'm sure there might be some sort of niggles and some sort of slow time actions that we might need to deal with but at the moment we're back in business ladies and gentlemen well it's tea break time in the smart car workshop <laughs> welcome back to the channel it's john here and you may have seen the latest video which is a video of the first road test and if you haven't seen that i won't lie it's not overly exciting but you can see us go up and down the road and what you can see at this stage then is well the car is back in some semi sort of pieces we're currently ironing out the problems and we knew there were going to be problems since we uh, fixed the car uh, there's a, a brief look inside it's uh, had a little bit of a hoover out and the interior is looking uh, a little bit better and it looks a bit sharp because i'm using this light because it's quite dark here it's around five o'clock i've just uh, finished being at work um dad has got the car then in the garage he's got uh, a little bit of a few problems that he's been ironing out uh the first one being uh, a coolant leak. Um, there is, or oh, Dad has discovered a coolant leak, and we've discovered that it's come from right down here. There's an elbow there, a little plastic elbow that's got a clip on it. Uh, that has actually not been touched in this process, so Dad is unsure how that has happened, um, but that has now been repaired uh, with a new uh, ring on there. And at the moment, it's looking good, so we're going to... Um, Keep an eye on that, make sure that it doesn't leak anymore. But these smart cars are funny little beasts because Dad has had to take the wheel off and just drop the engine down a little bit to actually access it to get at it to uh, put that new clip on. So it's been a little bit of a, a venture just to try and get that clip on. So that's the one issue that we faced. The second issue was that there was oil leaking from the rocker cover. Uh, the gasket hadn't actually gone on properly. Um, so Dad's had all the back bumper off again, uh, had all the manifold off on the top and the rocker cover off and it has now been repaired. The gasket is on properly and actually we've put a little bit of sealant on there as well just to keep it in place. Uh, Dad's been road testing it this week then. Um, I haven't been very well, uh, so I haven't been out and about. Um, but Dad has been road testing it, and I think his exact words were, it goes like a scolded cat. He is very, very impressed with how fast it is going in the lower... Uh, gears and the lower cogs and actually it did drive like a little go-kart before all this so the fact that we've replaced all these parts and it's now running at full compression and full pelt is probably a very good sign i'm gonna have to definitely keep an eye on my uh, on my lead foot and on my speedometer while i'm out and about because the last thing i want is uh, any points or any tickets uh, but that's just a brief update there's another thing we're doing as well at the front here we're just sorting out the Water. Uh, they're a funny little thing to fill the washer bottles in these. Uh, it's right down there, the washer bottle, but there's a, a pipe you can just see. There's a pipe. And if you don't fill it whilst the bracket is off the car, it actually doesn't go into the washer bottle because the water level is lower than the bottle. It's a weird little thing. If you understand water physics and gravity, then you understand uh, that it won't go in 
to the bottle. So we're just uh, having to do that, and I've just brought some coolant around to do that. Um, so that's it. That's the only two niggles uh, that we've found so far, unless there's something I'm missing. Um, but uh, what's it like? What's it like to drive at the moment? Now you've uh, now you've repaired it. Well, it goes like a scalded cat. It's a surprise, no? Uh, yeah, fast little thing. Um, so that's it. That's a brief smart car update. Obviously, the next video will hopefully be uh, me giving it a comprehensive road test. I'm feeling a little bit better now. Um, Dad has uh, going to keep monitoring that coolant level overnight and he's going to monitor the oil as well uh, but at the moment yeah it's uh, still receiving its last few um, snagging. snagging that's it snagging that's the word I wanted snagging uh, works but uh, we're looking okay I think that's just checking now to make sure there is no further leak from that elbow um, they'll, as I say being more updates still to come uh, oh one thing we have done I forgot to tell you uh, we've replaced the discs and the pads on the front because they were absolutely shot. So it's got brand new discs and brand new pads on the front as well. I forgot about those. Uh, they were 60 odd quid from our local motor uh, factors. Uh, so until next time then, uh, if you've liked the video, please give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikToks, and the Facebook. It's John Coupland, all one word. Uh, next update then hopefully will be me giving it a proper good test run uh, but until then no, take care no. <laughs> I'm uh, on the lookout for another smart car for dad I think uh, but until next time take care and uh, have a great day goodbye